Hello again, I am Blunty, and this is the Live Gamer HD2 from Ava Media. Now, I'm going to be upfront here. I've had more than a couple of issues with Ava Media gear in the past, so when they emailed me and asked me if I'd like to take a look at this new product, I was hesitant. But I looked into it, and there is a lot of promise here. That promise is being a plug-and-play PCIe capture card that you can use stacked in multiples without having to jump through hoops and use special non-standard drivers like you do with some of the other alternatives. The promise is also that of pulling in uncompressed, ultra-low latency gameplay in up to 1080p, 60 frames per second. And so with that new PC build I used as the subject of a recent beginner's friendly custom PC build guide, which you should watch if you haven't already, because even if I do say so myself, I did a very good job at it. Having within it a Threadripper CPU, which I chose for its multitasking muscle and massive amounts of I.O. that I built specifically to be a monster all-in-one rig for streaming and such, it seemed like the perfect place to try these claims out. So I asked the Ava Media people for two of them to see how well they deliver on the promise of that plug-and-play multi-device use case. But why would you even want to run multiple capture devices? Well, there's lots of reasons. Multi-camera setups for one, people who do things like cooking and art or craft streams, it's super useful there. Some may just want to easily pull in multiple console or external PC sources without any fussing around and swapping cables, or using HDMI switchers and such. For me, I've taken to using a proper camera in place of a webcam, which is an astronomical step forward in image quality and clarity and aesthetic and low light capability. And until now, I've been using an Elgato HD60 Pro as my main capture card and a HD60S as the camera feed capture. And coming real soon, yes, I will be looking at the Elgato Cam Link, which is specifically designed for using with cameras. But there's something to be said for using two PCIe cards for this job also. For one, it cuts down on cable clutter, it saves me a USB port and USB controller bandwidth, and it's just basically a much tidier solution. The LiveGame HD2 pulls in a very clean feed, partly because it doesn't and in fact cannot do any H.264 compression itself. Instead, it uses the easier to crunch but more inefficient MJPEG format. So be aware, in using this capture card, you will be relying on your CPU and or GPU to do the heavy lifting for the actual compression for recording and streaming. The benefit, though, is the feed comes in, at least over media claim, in uncompressed format, and thus is very clean. But this doesn't make a lot of sense to me, because MJPEG, or Motion JPEG, is, by nature, by design, a lossy compression system. That's the whole reason it was invented. That's the whole reason it exists at all. It's JPEG, but for video. It's compression. But that contradiction in their marketing aside, I've no complaints about the image quality. It is indeed very, very clean, very smooth, and without any noticeable artifacting. I never saw any hitches or dropped frames or anything. The hardware itself is small and light and easy to install. It has HDMI in, of course, and a lag-free HDMI pass-through port so you can feed your console back out again to a monitor or TV. There is also analog audio ports on board. Nice to have, but not especially useful these days, really. I quite like the design in general, but for those with windowed cases or show rigs, you should know that there's a LED on board, and it's not RGB, so a cold blue is what you're stuck with, whether you like it or not. But if that does clash with your build colours, or if you just don't want lights on at all, you can turn them off. You could also dim them if you wish. And the card does dismantle easily enough, so if it really does bother you and you're not afraid of a soldering iron or some other modding options, you can attempt to swap out the LEDs or maybe tint the light spreader. All at your own risk, of course, and you will be throwing away your warranty, but, you know, it can be done. On the software side of things, Ava Media have made some nice improvements to their Rec Central app since I last, well, since I last did battle with it. Now though, in this updated version, the UI is cleaner and more direct, everything is laid out nicely enough and sensibly enough, though there is a lot of wasted space in the user interface, which does bug me. You've got all the usual options here for a capture card, of course, resolutions, frame rates, recording settings to balance quality with disk space used, plus some extra options that will let you do some fancier stuff like overlays and webcams and green screens and notification pop-ups for things like subs and follows and the like while you're streaming. And yes, you can stream directly from the app to a multitude of services. 
And it's nice to have these functions built in for an all-in-one beginner-friendly solution, but frankly, I'd expect most streamers to stick to using OBS or XSplit, which are both far more mature, far more powerful, and far more flexible. Experienced streamers in particular will be frustrated with how sluggish basic stuff like simply changing between scenes is. So my strong recommendation is, even if you're starting out, learn OBS. And to that end, yep, the card, and as I have here, a pair of cards, work flawlessly in OBS. There was no issue with the cards conflicting with one another. They simply and natively present as two separate video capture sources, and I had no worries at all about using them simultaneously. And in fact, true to Ava Media's promise, they worked immediately. Without a driver install, you don't even need to have Ava Media's own app installed. They just work natively in a range of standard resolutions, at a range of standard frame rates, and in partial or full color spaces, topping out at 1080p 60 frames per second. This is the first time, in fact, that any Ava Media product I've used has worked right out of the box without even a small hiccup. So that's promising. Glad I gave them another chance. And finally, and most vitally for many use cases, especially live streaming and live recording of commentary for Let's Plays and the like, is lag or latency. And again, Ava Media have promised ultra low latency, and they deliver. What you're seeing here is a direct feed split off from the HDMI versus what the software presents to you. And as you can see, there's certainly some latency here. Enough, in fact, that there'll be an issue with certain types of games that need frame-perfect timing, like Fighters, for example. But that just means you won't want to use the software preview, and instead you should play off a second screen from the HDMI pass-through built into the card. That's why it's there. But outside of a few edge cases, you should find most games play just fine from the preview window in the Ava Media software or third-party streaming or recording software like OBS. Specifically, at 60 frames per second, there's about 6 frames of latency. A little more than I see with my Elgato HD60 Pro PCIe capture card, but nothing that hinders most games any more so. This means, rather importantly, your reactions, your commentary and other stuff will stay in sync with what your viewers experience. And if you are, like me, using one of them for your camera feed, your camera feed will be in sync with your microphone. And that roughly 6 frames of latency at 60 frames per second remains the same regardless of if I was only using one card or using both simultaneously. So, in the end, we have here a simple, effective 1080p 60 frames per second capture device that works flawlessly and easily. It has some latency that's just a little more than the Elgato HD60 Pro that has been my personal choice for some time now, but... The Ava Media works without drivers, and without jumping through hoops to get more than one working at the same time in the same machine, which makes it a very good choice for multi-capture card setups. I personally like Elgato's software a bit more, but I only ever use that for recording anyway. For streaming again, I always go for OBS, where the slight differences in the experience of using these cards is even more marginal. So yeah, first Ava Media product in a while, I have full confidence in recommending. They're good. They work great. It's a good choice. Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.